no question is ever stupid because ultimately it's it's a it's a blocker right you're spending time thinking about it which it just needs to be answered so you can move on to the next thing so don't ever feel like you know anything is stupid it, it, it's of value because ultimately it's taking focus you know from the next thing so yes let's 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 talk about it so don't ever feel that uh, you can't ask anything It'd be great to know um, how your week's been since last time we chatted. It's been, I think, re-energized in how I'm approaching things. Great. Um, and I think soon after a call, I got onto my uh, sales navigator and I started like fight, like being really, because before I was being quite broad and mm. slightly vague, maybe it's confusing to people. So. Uh, I liked how you gave those really simple, like, you know, this is what I'm offering kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I've been making contact with people. So I chose a specific area, whereas mm -hmm. before I was like, for example, choosing the whole of the UK. Um, mm -hmm. I've now just chosen like Manchester. And then, you know, I'm going to contact all those resources, those yeah. Con um, people mm. uh, before and then be more targeted about who I speak to and how I connect with them mm. and and yeah I'm just enjoy I, I've I've decided that I'm just going to enjoy it and push mm. through yeah. yeah and that's it pushing through is kind of the the grit aspect which is the defining aspect and I think it's incredibly difficult because it comes along with feeling uncomfortable and it, and it sucks. It really sucks to feel uncomfortable. It sucks to, to have this. Um, and I'm saying this because I've lived it right. I, it sucks to feel uncomfortable. It also sucks to have a kind of a, um, a self crisis of, am I good enough and all that stuff. So I think the whole journey, you have to be mindful of yes, perseverance is the main key thing. But also to be kind to yourself, to find the easiest kind of the, the route of least, least resistance to anything that I'm trying to do. Because naturally, the more pressure you feel, the not the worst, but typically the harder it is, you know, things are less refined and you just don't enjoy it as much. And it's not to say that everything is going to be easy. You know, actually, yeah. entrepreneurship isn't for everyone. And that's fine. And entre because entrepreneurship is incredibly difficult, but you know we're here for it, right? And you just got to persevere and keep going through it. So it'd be great to know, you know, what other areas that you'd kind of want assistance with, or what other areas have you been thinking about? Um, and we could kind of chat about those things just to see if there's anything else from my experience that could help. Because obviously we've spoken about outreach being much much simpler much easier to engage which it seems like you've got a little bit of leeway how about you know connecting back with people that you've worked with before was that a part of some of the messages that you were sending yeah awesome yeah yeah I did um and it was and I know there were like a few influential like locally influential people that mm. I know who I know work with um, a lot of like um, what do you call they're on a lot of boards so they yes. know people and they're like constantly talking and because that's not my nature I mm. always cringe when I see them yeah. so, you know like oh I'd stay away from them and but I mean we get on or get on or used to get on okay it's mm. just that I would I just they're just like so opposite to who I am. So I never wanted to actually work with them because they're just so gobby and they can just like sell anything to anyone. Mm -hmm. Maybe they are my allies and I need them on to be able to sell what, I, what I'm having to offer. So anyway, I reached out to them. I heard back from one lady mm -hmm. and she said, oh yeah, we might have something within her own organization um she said she will she look me in when they when they start looking at it so i have yeah. and i'm going to be uh 
consistent uh, I am going to try with them because mm. I think especially one lady who used to remember be her boss before, which is her so different in our leadership styles. She yeah. was just, she just, just, I just can't be in her presence. Mm. But only because she just talks the talk and she doesn't do the stuff behind it. She's a yeah. great, like, to carry someone with a picture. Um, mm. So, yeah, so... But I've reached out. I have reached out, and I was like, "There's no shame in it." I'm, uh, you know, I'm asking for help. Some people, after I put that post on uh, LinkedIn and stuff, some people have at least shared it, and yeah. you know, have been in touch. Just even if they comment or whatever, at least they're interacting with uh, with it. So that mm. was good. I, I think um, as well, just to just to add there you know sometimes there are people that you kind of need even though you might not quite get on with them and it might be that the mechanism for them is or the mechanism that you might employ is hey i'd love to ask you what do you look for when you engage with a third party supplier what are some of the no goes what are some of the things not to do what are the things that you should do you know you've done some procurement yourself and have that experience there are a lot of people that don't know that you need a health and safety officer. You need these, like you said, right? You need contingency people. You know, that information is valuable. And even that could be another aspect. Now, I know that's kind of a slight side to the coaching, mentoring primary, but I still think that that's of value, that information, and whether or not you would want to interview, and it could be a written interview, or, or a video interview with people <clears throat> with people like that because they are you know a little bit more extroverted going to say what they want to say so you can utilize that ego feel for your own content right so i would also say how can i utilize this person they like talking they might not walk the walk but at least we know that they're a decision maker so regardless if they do or do not walk the walk they are going to say yes or no to somebody so what's what's the kind of the factor of success for this person? Do they really want to see that you've got experience over here? And that information of how to approach this agency is valuable. And that could be a piece of content. And then be like, well, have you got experience in doing kind of this whole, you know, journey to the procurement? You'd be like, yes, I have. I have the service that I offer, you know? So it could be just another aspect because ultimately right now, in some ways, any business is business, right? It's all building on what you already know your experiences and it might provide the, the kind of resources to be able to provide some more of the coaching and mentoring for free like you like you've already tried to do you're trying to lower the bar and what i'm doing which is kind of interesting is i'm playing it out right now in the sense of my digital agency is paying for the fact that i can talk for free with people and i'm just doing four sessions which is great and i think that that sometimes it just makes it a little bit lighter rather than trying to to make something different like if for example i said just for, for argument's sake if i was like it's 100 pound for half an hour for argument's sake right or 50 quid for half an hour whatever i say right already people will be like i don't know how much value i'm going to get for that 50 pounds or for that 20 pounds or for that 10 pounds so what I think might be interesting is if you were able to go back to the people that you have engaged with in a coaching kind of uh, way, just to get them either to write a blurb or to record a video of themselves saying, what was it like before? What was it like in it? And what was it like after? Again, it could be, you know, how were you and how did it improve things? You know, it could be just two simple questions. And I think, again, it's about trying to give as much context up front so there's less uncertainty. Because we know, you and I know, that we might not instantly buy something. It might be that we research, look, we might look at comparisons, we might look at other things over here to see, well, they also are providing the same thing. What's the difference? So it's all about, you know, bringing forward and showing what's going on and showing that transparency. Because nonetheless, people will still be like, you know, what? I think I kind of need that. So I might engage. And, and even I'm not sure if you do um, provide some sort of free mechanism to to get going to the more kind of more of the category of clients that could potentially afford you know 
mentorship on a long term basis. But but what do you think about that stuff? I'm sure you've probably tried some of that stuff anyway, right? Yeah, I have uh, because I do take testimonies. I have worked with, I think, uh, twenty odd uh, clients awesome. free of uh, cost, uh, so that I, at least the the thing was that they would give me a testimony about mm. how it was and what worked for them and the before and after bit, um, and I've also then recently started a pay what you can kind of a uh, coaching scheme mm-hmm. so i've said if you feel like your coaching session was worth more than a coffee uh you know from costa or if it was your uh, you know just what was it worth you pay me that because i know some of the women can't afford it but i think it gives them something when they feel like they are paying for it as well it is the um, accountability side of yeah. it isn't it because you want to make sure that they value this even if it's a pound you know that that that, that there is some transaction because the, that that mechanism yeah. needs to be in place Go, going back to the kind of the 20 odd um clients you've had what i would encourage you to do is um again right now we re- we met last week and I don't know anything about those 20 people. And I'm not saying that you compromise any confidential information, but I'm sure that, that there are some general themes that have happened across those 20 that you could literally share one a week or even, you know, a little bit more than that. Because I literally engaged last week and I do not know those experiences and I don't know the benefits that they felt after coaching specifically with you. So I would also say, even though you might have done it, you've ticked that exercise, if you've got all the testimonies, I posted them when I posted them. Having that circulation of content, and even because you're so good at writing, finding, you know, that one sentiment and writing it three different ways to get the idea across. It's the same sentiment, but you've written it with three different examples or or three perspectives on the same message. That's something that you could do reasonably easy because of your skill set of writing. And I think that could just keep on, like we were talking before, it's about letting people know that you exist and letting people know yeah. that you you do things. So right now, if someone engages so I, today, no one will know about those yeah. people. So they, you can share that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that's a good point, actually, because I've got all these testimonies. At the time they shared it, I might have given them a little... You know, I might have shared a, a little excerpt of it, but I've not like used it as a as a journey or anything like that. Mm. So, um, yeah. So I might I'm, I'm going to look at that and see if any change can come out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I th- I think um, that is the interesting side because from the common themes, you can then start writing articles. But like, okay, how do you get over opinions of others because that is a common theme with the people that I've the individuals that I've chatted to and then if you were able to write a piece of content you could then create you know a larger piece of content you know a course you know and it could be something more elaborate as you get further in so then you know in x days or x months or x years you have seven courses all of them are literally 10 pound and it's a couple of videos a, a, a couple of you know pages of a pdf saying how to get over opinions of others, how to get over failure, you know, and you could build this framework around the things that people are really experiencing and you could drop in quotes from those people. So then yeah. this machine, this kind of content machine is producing itself because you're having free sessions or, or kind of sessions at a reasonable price. That content then is repurposed to start marketing because we've, talk, we've talked about the salesy side of, Hey, are you interested? Yes or no? And I guess that's a little bit of marketing as well. But the more that you, you're doing it, regardless of getting any new clients, the more interesting it becomes, right? That there's, um, there's a famous actor that basically, um, when, he, when he wasn't an actor, his car used to break down all the time. And when his car broke down, he used to sit by the side of the car chilling and no one would come to help him. But as soon as the time when his car broke down and he started to fix it himself, people came along to help fix it. And I think the difference there about you're doing this regardless 
you're doing this regardless because this is the thing that makes you buzz. This is the real thing that's inside you that you need to get out. So you're doing it regardless of any new clients or any people paying you. And this is the evidence of that. Look at this stuff that's going on. Like, look at these things. Like, and then people will be like, oh, actually this thing over here, I've been following for three weeks and like quietly. And this thing over here that you posted last week really resonated with me. So I've actually bought one of your 10 pound courses. It, it can be, yeah. you know, something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're giving me a lot of ideas because my head's going with, yeah, the, because I want to make it as accessible as possible. But I guess it's the long burn, isn't it? It's like, yeah, you've got to, yeah, it's not going to be an overnight, um, suddenly like, oh, here I am. You know, I, I wish, I wish there. it was. Yeah, I wish it was. Where annoyingly it is, and, and that's okay. Yeah. I think I hope that even though I might be giving lots of ideas, I hope that it encourages you just to have a new perspective, and it doesn't overload yeah. you. Because the importance here, like I said last week, it's about the lightness. Because ultimately, this is hard, and you want to find things that are very light and and kind of with the flow of energy that you already have. So don't feel like oh now I've got twenty extra things on my to do list. Well, you already oh, have no. you already have pieces of content. It's just a case of you know finding those yeah. again and posting it this week. And you know even if you scheduled it using something like Buffer, you know it then makes it a little bit lighter again. You can get that for yeah. free, I think, if it's um, <laughs> low accounts. So don't feel. I hope yeah. that you don't feel that you know this stuff is ideas. Oh no, now I have to go and do it. You know, finding the smallest, simplest version of it. Yeah. Can I ask you uh, what yep. might be a really totally irrelevant, stupid question? But you I'm know sure it won't be, but yes, you can answer. <laughs> I'm sure you it won't know be these stupid. Hashtags, hashtags that people like on all platforms, hashtags seem to be the thing. Yep. And I just pick whatever I think is the theme of the subject. Mm. But am I actually using it? the right way or is there some other way to use it because i feel like and i know and i've read a few articles and like you know how to optimize your hashtags and mm -hmm. but i still feel like either um i could be doing it right or i am i doing it right mm -hmm. uh, what are your what's your thoughts on it so if you're posting a piece about mental health and you tag it as mental health that is perfect. If you want to broaden it a little bit, you might want to put some surrounding hashtags because again, it's about maximizing uh, the number of hashtags that you might use. So for example, in an Instagram post, uh, I think it's roughly 20 something, right? Which is the max. Yeah. So it might be that you want to use thematic hashtags, which are in line with the content, but you also might want to do most popular hashtags so, you know, things more around like daily devotion and word for today and those kind of bigger, broader ones might be somewhere that you go. Now, for me, I've stopped kind of bothering about <laughs> some of that because they become vanity metrics. And mm -hmm. yes, it's nice to have seven people like my post, but do they actually, do they actually, you know, yeah. are they actually engaged? So. I would always try and measure things um, to kind of figure out where the balance is. It might be that you always post a set number of hashtags and there are websites that can give you, here are the top 10 hashtags to use or top 20 or the best hashtags to use. And you'll put them in your posts, but sometimes they can just be vanity metrics. And although that's great mm. and it feels good, it doesn't necessarily always, you know, convert into something larger. So I, I would I was always measure the any sort of um, you know it's always finding the the root one. I I would much rather you know message people, start creating connections rather than necessarily want vanity metrics of people liking my post. And I know it's difficult because we've been basically conditioned to think that likes equals good. <laughs> so of course, why why would I not want that? Yeah. And I think it's also the social proofing of well if no one's like this mm -hmm. does that mean that it's not good and that's not actually true mm -hmm. right if no one's liked it that's fine you know that's fine yeah. so I, I would say one you're already doing the right thing with tying thematic stuff you might want to increase it to be slightly bigger picture of 
you know, thought of the day or those kind of things. But also don't be too caught up in, in vanity metrics, mm. but it's completely fine to do it because it does just open the door a little bit further. And I think hashtags yeah. is, is great, but what would be more interesting is if you looked at a hashtag that was hashtag mental health and started just chiming in with your opinion, that, that would be more interesting and you would get more engagement and the right kind of engagement that's a little bit more, you know, meat on the bone rather than, oh, I got 12 likes yeah. because I hashtagged photography. And that's a secret one that basically there's lots of photography <laughs> ones and you know that someone's liked it because it was a nice photo, you know. <laughs> Which could so, be totally relevant to what you're trying to achieve as well. Exactly. And, and also you can't really it's difficult to kind of match it up to your audience. So specifically, you have an individual in mind that will benefit from what you want to give. And if it's, you know, for example, now I'm not saying that you don't work with men, but for example, if a couple of men like to post, it, it, it might not always then translate to the, the, the direct customer. Although I completely also agree that, you know, sometimes you might never be speaking to the direct customer. It's a referral anyway. So it might be, hey, I've been seeing these posts and they might speak to a friend of theirs and recommend. So I also recognize that that plays. But yeah, the, the tangible stuff is if you're speaking to the right people and the way you know that is by engaging with those people. Um, so yeah, I would also say another kind of the hashtag realms of like locations and areas and stuff is another thing that you might do because typically, you know, wherever you are, there'll be some local business network and sometimes they have business hours where between eight and nine we'll post about the local businesses in yorkshire or you know wales or london or, or something like that as well yeah but by the way just to encourage yeah. you like no question is ever stupid because ultimately it's it's a it's a blocker right mm -hmm. you're spending time thinking about it which it just needs to be answered so you can move on to the next thing so don't ever feel like you know, anything is stupid. It, it, it's of value because ultimately it's taking focus, you know, from the next thing. So yes, let's, let's, let's talk about it. So don't ever feel that uh, you can't ask anything. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Can I just say that after our conversation, um, you uh, inspired me to start my own podcast for some reason. Awesome. But it's but it's nothing. But it's not to do with anything I do. I'm just doing it for fun. Um, That's fine too. I'm an yeah. Indian. Uh, I'm an Anglo Indian, and I find like not many people know about the Anglo Indian. So I'm launching a podcast called Chutney Mary, which is just going to be like a couple of minutes every day about the Anglo Indians and uh, you know just the culture and the cuisine and all the history and just raise some awareness but do it in a fun way rather than just totally completely completely off what I normally do yeah. and and that's that's awesome because again it's a case of you have many facets you have lots of experience and sharing out that information and knowledge by the way I also do coaching like that's um the challenger sales um, book that I put in that was of it was of that essence right you're telling this story and the story matches to a pain point now your experiences or history and like hey did you know that this happened and and, and these things go on someone will be like that's super interesting I never know that oh oh you're actually a coach that's really interesting I'm really in looking for this coaching stuff so I think having the the kind of information information value 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 oh by the way I do this coaching is a much better approach now it's hard because it doesn't necessarily pay the mortgage, but I think it's yeah. a much um, much more interesting way to engage in, in business. So I think that's awesome. How are you? Um, how are you distributing the podcast? What are you using? Um, I'm using Anchor. Uh, I found that because it links with Spotify, and yes. I think once they validate you, then you can it can be found there. I sent a, a little trailer to my relative, my sister, <laughs> mm. and I had like silence and shock. I think they were like, shock, what is she doing? Mm. 
<laughs> well, that only may encourage me to to carry on. So I, I just want to, because it's such, if, when you think about the Anglo Indians, they kind of uh, hide in plain sight. They want mm. to just blend in. The, the, there's a lot of shame uh, around the heritage because we are like, like we are the bastards of colonialism. Uh, mm. from India basically that's what it is yeah. um, and so we don't have much ancestral records and there's all sorts of things we, so I want to share that but in a fun way not like I'm not yeah. bothered about did the British do this and did they do that I'm not bothered about that but I want to mm. share the fun the fun side of it and this is and it you yeah. have a passion for it you have a passion for it you, you know what you're talking about and it it aligns quite nicely with some thematic things that you could delve deeper in and this might become you know well it will become something that might be a like a route into speaking about your coaching so i think it's really exciting you know there's no harm in doing these things i i actually like doing some of these kind of slightly more odd different things because it produces interesting results and ultimately, in three months' time, if it doesn't go anywhere, that's fine too. Like you tried it as as yeah. kind of a marketing kind of output, or or just for fun, and it can be completely separate. So I think it's nothing wrong with trying yeah. these things, so long as you know you can find the the right tie back potentially if you want to tie it back, which yeah. I think is really really cool. Yeah. I want to keep it as a mystery, and then like say in a month's time, depending on how it goes. Yeah, and I'll tie it to my yeah. That's completely <laughs> I don't fine. Want to do it without <laughs> without yeah, knowing we, it Yeah, um, So my wife and I have encouraged kind of people that are a little bit afraid about an idea to basically do it in secret, because then you can ignore those concerns to just get it out for the sake of getting it out, and then they end up switching to be like, "Hey, everybody, I've been working on this," and that's completely fine. Because the most important thing is to to ride that wave of I want to try something and I'm afraid of failing. We'll do it privately, you know. Next time, you might then feel the confidence to do it publicly. You know, there's nothing wrong with doing that. I think that's great. Awesome. Well, hopefully that will go. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to hearing how that goes as as the weeks progress. Yeah. But yeah thanks so much again for your your time. It's uh, always good to chat. And um, yeah, if you like to to book in the next session i'll just follow up with another email and we can have yeah. another chat next week I will say. awesome all, all right. right enjoy the rest Thank of your you day so much. take care you too Bye. Take care. Thank you for listening to Dan Ryland's podcast today. Hopefully you've took something away from this session and please do tweet Dan or DM him via Twitter or Instagram or looked at his LinkedIn if you have any more questions about today or anything about your personal business that you might be struggling about that Dan might be able to help. Hope you have found this enjoyable and see you next time.